Um, afternoon, gentlemen. Um, perhaps start with you, Isaac. Um, it's been a, a whirlwind journey, um, but with Lucan um, going back home for the time being, it perhaps presents an opportunity for you, and, and Dave spoke about that on Friday, that you're firmly in the mix. Can you just talk us about talk to, to us about the journey back home um, and what it means to, to be in the frame to, to represent the Wallabies again? Uh, yeah, it's been been a bit of a long journey. You know, it started probably this time last year after I left. Um, no, but I'm, I'm very pumped to be back. I've been enjoying it a lot, getting to know the guys. It's a lot of competition in the second row this year with the squad, which is good. Um, but yeah, I've just been really enjoying it. Been a bit of a journey, but happy to be back. It certainly has been a journey. Um, did you think that you'd be back as soon as you, as you returned? Oh, no, definitely not. I didn't expect it to happen this quick at all. I thought I'd be just in Perth for the next six months, really. And is, is it, like, it's kind of interesting, you and Quaid sitting next to each other and you both haven't worn the dull jersey for some time. So is the two of you kind of going into battle a little bit together, wanting wanting to um, represent all this again? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's why I'm back as the dream of mine to play for the Wallabies and yeah, I'm trying to, every opportunity I get really. Isaac, going, essentially playing, essentially playing your first game, first game back for the Wallabies in your new adopted home. I know the Wallabies got a chance to go out to sort of Perth club rugby and sort of experience it. What's been your sort of thoughts of the potentially debuting in front of what, what will be your home crowd heading into 2022? Um, well, look, first of all, if I get picked, I'll be stoked. Um, but look, it'll be unreal to play play in Perth. I've been out and about a bit and a few people have come up and said hello and stuff like that. And the rugby community is really strong here and it'd be good to have a game for them this weekend. So just touching on that rugby community, what's been sort of the feedback that you've got from a lot of the sort of people that, that have come up to you? I know it's been sort of a very... <coughs> Um, what a difficult sort of week, two weeks for him, given the uncertainty. Uh, yeah, I guess at first, you know, there was a lot of people disappointed about the game getting called off. But once it got um, changed to this weekend, everyone was just pumped and said they were ready to come watch and couldn't wait to get Doptus and watch it. Wait, um, Alex McLeod here from Rugby Pass over in New Zealand. Um, Dave Rennie sort of talked about last week about how impressed he'd been with you um, and the off, the, on, off the field, like in terms of leading the squad around training and whatnot. And he said that you were starting to apply pressure on the selection staff uh, to get picked for this weekend's game. Has he, has he given you any sort of indication that you'll play this weekend? Nah, not yet, mate. Like it's, um, I think he's, he keeps everybody on their toes. Uh, when we're training, the, the, the teams are always quite mixed up. You're having to look around, see where Hoops or Marika is, and um, you know try and get some indication there. But other than that, um, you know the boys are just all, all fighting for spots. And you know Rod sort of alluded to you know the the competition you know throughout the the locks, the halves, and and everywhere across the board. We've got some some fantastic players here who are you know putting in a, a lot of work and a lot of effort to um, you know become better players and, and put their hands up for selection. And obviously with the Rich and Wanga back home, uh, staying in New Zealand, um, it's a clear path for Bowden Barrett to come in and start against you guys this week. Have you guys sort of discussed um, how to sort of contain him? He's obviously a massive threat with ball in hand, um, top end speed. Have you sort of run through the sort of, the sort of threats that he poses to you guys? And that's, that's the, the thing about the All Blacks, you know, you have Rich and Wanga um, stay at home, you know, for the birth of, of one of his ch um, children, and then you have um, Bodhi coming, and you know, two of you know the best players in the world, and and how do you defend that? You know, it's one of those things that you know really put so much emphasis on on one person and, and stopping them. It's just more about slowing them down, and and the ABs as, as a whole, um, they've been a phenomenal team, um, you know, over the the past two games, and, and we're very much more so focused on you know trying to. Um, nail down our, our stuff. Um, you've got, got a lot of young players, as, as we spoke about, who, who have showed some some great things over the past few games and, and the series against um, the French. So you know, as, as long as those guys can continue to grow, you know, everybody in the squad you know, puts their hand up and you know tries to push each other. Um, you know, then hopefully we'll be in a, in a great spot. But you know, 
to answer your question, uh, he's, he's a difficult bloke to, to be able to contain and you know, we'll be just trying to slow him down as best we can. You mentioned that uh, the young guys have well, it's sort of been an emphasis for you guys to nail down the things that you need to improve on. What are some of those things that you've been looking to work on in the lead up to this game? Oh, mate, like, uh, you know, there's, it's not something you just put your, your finger on and say this is the one thing that, that we need to change or, or need to be better at. As as young men, as as a squad, it's 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 a journey, um, you know. Like, so we just come come to Perth. A, a game got cancelled. There's there's a learning learning curve there to be able to understand. Okay, we've got a little bit extra time. Um, you know, we can grow as a squad. There's there's a, a bunch of new guys coming in. We've had Samu come in. He's getting to know a lot of the guys. Um, you know, myself, I've only been in the in the squad for I think four four or five weeks. Um, you know, so just as as a team, being able to understand our, our structures better, having those that week together, we can build on our game plan. Um, you know, look at a few areas where um, you know we let the the, the All Blacks um, take the game away a, a little bit in that in that second test. You know, so um, there's not one area, but as as a group, as as people, as as men, um, you know, we're trying to um, you know slowly just inch our way forward, and um, you know we've been grateful to have have this extra week. Thank you, Beth. Quaid, um, with, with the rugby championship being shifted to Queensland, James O'Connor's likely to come back into the squad, which means that when there's already a fly half and another fly half, it makes competition even more difficult. Um, we, we spoke with that in mind, but also when you first arrived, well, rejoin the camp you, you spoke about the idea of it's great to get another opportunity to pass on some of those learnings to the rest of the squad but with each passing test um japan your season not too far away james o'connor coming back it almost makes it more difficult for you so bearing that in mind how much would it mean to you to be able to represent the wallabies again and, and bring on your, your, your 71st cap yeah, I mean, like that hasn't been a, a focus of, of mine at all. It's not something that you know I've, I've come in here going, oh, I just have to play a test. You know, for me, it, coming in here has been about learning. Um, you know, and mate, the, the things that I've been able to learn, and whether I go back to to Japan after this game, whether it's after the rugby championship, I, I'm I'm not 100% sure um, just yet. I'll have a wealth of knowledge um, in terms of footballing, um, in terms of things I've been able to gain and learn about myself and being back inside this environment. Um, you know, the, the level of, um, of skill, the level of, of training that, that we've been able to train at. You know, I haven't had that for, you know, I think it's what, four years or something since I was last inside um, a Wallaby squad. And, um, you know, so as I said, like it hasn't been a focus of mine to come in and um, just play games. You know, if I can grow as a as a man, grow as a, a rugby player, take that back to Japan, and you know, again pass that knowledge on onto other people, well then, that's a, a great reward for myself. Um, you know, so that that's where my focus is at, and um, anything else outside of that, you know, that, it's just bonuses along the way in in this journey. And um, have you got an idea of whether or not you're staying with the Wallaby squad beyond this week? Um, no, uh, you know, it's, it's something that. I actually haven't had um, conversations a, a, around that. Um, you know, I've just been taking each week as it comes, I mean, and, and enjoying um, my time in here. Um, you know, again, being able to to learn from a footy perspective, be able to um, grow as a as a man, as a as a player, and then you know, everything else has has been a, a great bonus. Uh, Quaid, uh, you've been able to you've played under quite a few uh, very good coaches. Uh, can you tell us uh, your assessment of Dave Rennie, how he connects with the players, his knowledge, uh, and just what the overall vibe's been under under Dave? If you can give us a bit of a, an idea of seeing him just being dropped into into thing. Yeah, I think that um, you know, one of the the first thing that that I noticed when I came in, into the squad is um, you know there's there's, there's a, a great emphasis on you know inclusion, um, you know representing everybody in, in this team. Um, you know, in, in, in the squad we've got guys um, you know, Australian born, we've got guys who are Samoan, Tongan born, Fijian, um, born in New Zealand, guys who have come from different backgrounds. And there's a real emphasis on, you know, everybody having their identity represented. And I think that when you look at Australia as as a country, as a as a whole, it's such a multicultural um, landscape. 
and to be able to see that everybody is represented in that is a, is a great thing and, and something that I've really enjoyed. Um, you know, but also he has a very much a, a growth mindset. Um, you know, so there's been times on the training paddock and, and the training paddock is, is a place to get better, a place to practice good habits, to practice things that you may not necessarily do in a game, but be able to get confidence to at some point be able to pull that off. And being able to see him encourage guys, you know, when, um, you know, it might be a, a skill error, but the intention was there and he will just go and, and reinforce it. Hey, the idea was great. Loved what you did there, but the skill let you down. I need to see you practicing that. And I think that that for me is, is something that when, when you see a coach um, not coming over and burning you for making a mistake, but more so nurturing you to understand that was a, the intent was right. I, I could see what you were trying to do there, but you need to get better at that skill. Mm -hmm. Can I ask if this um, started uh, ambitioning you to be a head coach ultimately, or um, you know, has it maybe turned you off that as well in, in some ways? Yeah, I mean, like, to be honest, um, like, when I was playing club football at, at South in 2018, um, that was probably the first time that I actually really enjoyed um, sort of passing on, on knowledge, I guess. You know, before that, I didn't really have um, the patience for it. Um, you know, at, at this level, at Super Rugby and at Test level, I would get, actually get kind of frustrated if someone didn't understand their role or um, miss the jump on, on a play or, or forget a little bit of knowledge because to me that, that was, you should just automatically know it being at that level. And I think that that was uh, an error in, in judgment from my behalf. Um, instead of putting in the, the time and effort to um, help other people because everybody learns in, in different ways. And when I went to South, um, obviously a, a club that you know, doesn't have have much resources, doesn't have much money. So the coaching around that, the um, you know the players that came in, talented players, but very raw. So myself, being fortunate enough to have you know, great coaching, um, great resources, and and everything from a, from such a young age, I was able to um, you know find patience in in myself, find patience in, in the things that I had learned. And that was probably the first time that I really enjoyed um, and I got more satisfaction out of seeing other players learn. And then you'd be out on the field and there'd be something you had a conversation about or something that you could see guys working at week in and week out. And then when it, when it happened and you see uh, and the light bulb moment when they realised and under, understood what was going on, that was just a moment for me that I got so much satisfaction out of. And, you know, that that's something that is a process. And, you know, so in terms of coaching down the track. It's not something that I, I would say, yeah, that's definitely something I want to do, but um, I feel like now where I'm at as a, as a man, as, um, you know, as a football player, um, I definitely have a, a lot more patience for, for that. And do you think there's more pressure on a head coach than players? And what kind of pressures do you see now that you've, you've spent this kind of role or done this kind of role? Yeah, I think that there's there's a lot of pressure on on coaches. They they have uh, a very difficult role, and see, and that's the thing with with players. You know, a lot of players who transition into coaching, they don't realise the amount of work that that goes into coaching. The, the hours of watching footage, um, you know, the hours of planning. You know, when we walk out onto the field as as players, there's you see cones, drills, um, all this sort of stuff, and you know that's all set up and and done for us. That's take taken you know, weeks of planning. Um, you know, when you have to watch footage of every other team, know the players inside and out. Players do that to a degree, but coaches, it's it's a totally different um, ball game. And then, obviously, selection. Um, you know, as players, we don't have, have any say in that. That'd be something that I feel there's, there's a lot of pressure on, on that. Um, you know, you're, you're breaking a lot of people's hearts by, by telling them that they're, they're not involved, but you're also um, you know, giving them areas and, and things that they can work on you know, to push for selection. So you know, I don't envy the, the job of a coach, um, you know, but I feel like they do have a, a very tough role. In, but as players, you know, we're, the, we're the ones out on the field. There's a fair bit of pressure on, on players as well. Um, you know, a lot of people don't see the, the work that goes into um, you know, being a football player. It looks like 
it's a very glamorous um, job when you when you get out there on, on a Saturday and that's all that the public see. But you know, when you walk around the hotel here and you see the guys spending hours working on their bodies, um, you know, the meetings, um, you know, the injuries, the ups and downs through through coming back from injuries, the disappointment and, and losses, the the highs from from winning. You know, it can be a very much a, an emotional roller coaster as it can be a, a physical um, roller coaster and very physically demanding. Thank you. Last couple on line, guys. Hey. Yeah, just quickly, Clay, can I get your thoughts just on how you think Isaac's reintegrated into the Wallaby setup uh, now that he's on the cusp of a return after, like you said, a pretty pretty turbulent year that he's had? Yeah, I mean, like, to have Rodder back in Australia, it's a, it's a great thing for, for Australian rugby. Um, you know, I played with him, him years ago and he was you know, phenomenal talent, uh, a great player and uh, an even better man um, off the field, you know, so um, you know, I've enjoyed being able to catch up, spend some time with him, um, you know, and and I know that he's, he's going to be a great asset for, for Australian rugby from now and, and into the future. And, and Isaac, what are, you, what are you bringing to this side that you might not have had a year ago, do you think, based on what you've learned over the last 12 months? Uh, yeah, so probably since being in France, I guess I learned a lot more about physicality in the game and probably more of a aggressive side of a game for a lock. So I think that's probably what I'd be able to bring back now after being in France. It's definitely more physicality and stuff around the breakdown and ball carry, which I thought was my weaker points before I left for France.